All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Mental Sweat Show. Uh, today we have a very special guest, the one, the only, starting quarterback for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Guns up, Tyler Shock. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good to have, good to be on, guys. It's been uh, heard a lot of good things. Just wanted to, to come on here with you guys, talk some ball, talk some old stuff. So appreciate it. Chop it up, chop it up. You know, we see the red shirt on with the guns up, but you <laughs> yeah, see me yeah. as a super fan here with all the Oregon shit on. Um, <laughs> can we lo- talk a little bit first, you know, you know, official interview and saying kind of your road to becoming the pride of West Texas? Yeah, man, it was started at the dewy slopes of uh, Eugene, and, uh, <laughs> the old dirty huge, man, where we all we all grew together. Um, obviously, we started there for uh, in 2018, enrolled early. Met uh, met my boy Walk, um, and then kind of just went from there where we started becoming roommates. And then met Brad and you, Nate, where we kind of all connected and started that one year in 2020. And COVID, um, ended up transferring here. But I think the memories made even when I wasn't starting probably were the the best time, just hanging out with all the guys and and learning and and growing. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, a little off the field stuff. Like I remember that COVID summer where I think you and me especially, but I mean, all of us got really close because couldn't really go home. No, yeah. Kind of we're just working out, COVID, everything. So. I think we're, you know, everything lacked football-wise as far as, like, we couldn't really do anything with the offense or with the coaches, and a lot of that disconnect came. But we got the, – all the players, I think we got really close and had a lot of fun, which yeah. is the good part about it. Yeah, I was about to say, I actually, oddly enough, thought that was, like, some of, like, the most fun time of – one of, like, the most fun parts of college, actually, was when – there was literally nothing to do except mm-hmm. for just do your little workout in your group of eight people. Yeah. And then <laughs> go home. Play video games. Literally nothing else to do. You couldn't yeah. even do anything. So oh, yeah. moving to Texas is all good. And it, your fiance now working slash living in Texas with you as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. She's actually hanging out in the room with me. Jordan's a, she's a seventh grade science teacher and a, a basketball coach now. Um, here in Lubbock. So no she's, soccer? She's a soccer player. They don't – yeah, I know. So they actually don't have a soccer program in, at the middle school level here in, in Lubbock. And wow. Yeah, she technically coaches all the sports. She coaches volleyball, but they don't have – that's what she's trying to get installed. It's pretty uh, pretty sad, honestly, but the, she loves it. She got – she's probably more busy than me some days, most days, because she's te- – I mean, Ryan knows his parents have been teachers and – I mean, their schedule and what they get paid for is just like it's criminal. Also, everyone listening at home, Mental Sweat Podcast is on TikTok. That's Feel right. free to give us a follow. Yeah. Shameless plug. Shameless, shameless plug. plug. Ultimate shameless. But yeah, I think we'll, what's next? One touch on your injuries. I know yeah. we kind of talked about that a little bit before we we're recording here, but for everyone back home, Tyler Shuck didn't, you didn't have many injuries at all when you were here at Oregon, right? Mm hmm. So, yeah, no, I mean, it was really, um, obviously the normal bumps and bruises, but as a quarterback, um, you really don't have that much anyway. So, you don't get hit in practice, more just kind of maintenance. Um, even when we were started, when I was starting, not, not that many. Um, and it really kind of put a lot of it in perspective to me when I got here. Um, more just, I didn't really have any, but for someone in an injury that's kind of so fluke that you really couldn't do anything to prepare to not for it to not happen or what to do after, it was it kind of took a lot out on me mentally to where you're just kind of, you're just trying to find like why, why you're doing this. And and it was honestly, I'm really thankful it happened just because um, I got a lot of time just doing nothing. And with a collarbone injury, which happened twice, I'm 20, uh, 21 when I got here to Lubbock, um, earned the starting job. And then the fourth game started three, and I was the start of the fourth game. I broke it um, and didn't play again for the rest of the year, like for the rehab. You, they literally just do nothing. There's not like a progression. Like you just have to let the bone heal. Um, so that was kind of the worst part because you're just sitting there watching. I like I'm watching movies, doing nothing. So you kind of just go insane a little bit. Um, I think obviously Ryan and 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 Nate and you guys have probably been banged up a lot and have some your own injuries, but it's just it's not fun for sure. Yeah, it's it's especially hard when you get injured. Um... <clears throat> It's hard when you get injured and then your coaching staff leaves. I think that was like, that was like a double. I know that you had that happen. I had that happen last mm-hmm. year. Um, Cause you kind of, you kind of feel like lost in some ways. Like mm-hmm. you're not playing on the field. There's the uncertainty of your coaches leaving. 
Um, talk a little bit about that, you know, heading into this year, how you got through that and how uh, you ended up winning the starting job again this year. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of I put a lot of faith in um, some of the relationships I had and, and really just a new staff and I and a lot of faith in myself, honestly, just because I really from my prior experiences with coaches at Oregon and also here, just I knew like I really you just can't trust what coaches are going to tell you. You can't really trust what they're they might be t- saying to other guys. Um yeah, I really had to put a confidence in myself because it's just like, you know, whether it was whoever it was, I'm not going to throw any names, but almost every coach in, I've met, they're going to do whatever they think's right for themselves and the team, which is understandable at the same time, but you also have to do the same thing for yourself. Um, but really, it just kind of came down to um, I wanted to be healthy in the spring, and that's why I didn't play those last, like, two games or three games, um, just because it was still kind of fresh. And I knew if, I was, if there was going to be a competition, that's all I wanted to – uh, ensure and that's what I told coach McGuire and coach Kittley is like just give me an opportunity to compete you know I'll, I'll show you and uh, I think you know me personally I felt like I won it in the, the spring or summer but obviously um, it ended up going to the fall um, just for for other reasons and but at the end of the day it just it kind of just like I said before it really made you find that why like why you're doing this game and and it, I found a lot more passion just kind of getting back and rehabbing yeah no, that makes sense. I mean, I just to reiterate, and a lot of people don't understand that is that the I thought when you come to college, the idea of like favoritism, daddy ball being it should was over. Like I thought it was gonna be more of like how people always kind of preach that NFL is, which is like it's a true business. Yeah. There's very much favoritism and unfairness in mm-hmm. a lot of college football, all the way up to the very top, which we were all at at one point. Or right, mm-hmm. two of you guys still are. Um, we had Dawson on not too long ago. He was talking about how Willie Taggart recruited him, and then the next day he left. was leaving. Yeah, I'm sure you have a similar story to that too, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, he was actually uh, interviewing for Florida State while he was on my home visit. Uh, he was in interview clothes, just regular like student tie, like no Oregon gear, and Arroyo was there, just like wide eyed, like he knew what was going on, but he couldn't tell me. And they were on my home visit, um, and he just – we were talking about Oregon the whole time, and he was basically still recruiting me there. And he was like – he's like, go ahead and ask me, Tyler. He's like, he's like, you think I'm staying? I was like, I was like, well, are you going to stay? He's like, of course I am. And, like, I love Oregon. Like, Oregon's my home. <laughs> the next day, Willie Tiger to Florida State. I'm like, all right, this, this, this is kind of a big intro of, like, what college football I should, in retrospect was going to be Jesus like. like you, he was doing the O with you where you guys put up your hands together? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, was a, it was a weird time. And then, obviously, going there, really kind of committed to uh, Arroyo. I, obviously, Coach Chris Wall was the, the head coach, but we didn't really – he didn't really recruit me. He was obviously an O-line guy. Um, yeah. Well, but yeah, like it, said, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do what they feel is best, you know, for them, themselves and their family. And I think a lot of guys going into college is like you don't want to commit to a, a staff per se. You want to go somewhere where you feel like you kind of fit in there with your the team, the, the environment, and school. And then you're gonna have fun there because a lot's gonna change. Yeah, what's the uh, saying? Don't commit to a coach. Commit to a school. Like you actually mm-hmm. want to go to because mm-hmm. you know coaches come and go. Like we saw it. Like Ryan had three four different staff so yeah it's pretty it's a it's a cold world man yeah now it's willie tiger's at colorado business. right yeah he's like yeah. some offensive assistant or something with the uh, with coach prime yeah prime time yeah, or with yeah the, he got hired yeah. to prime wow, staff that. that's pretty funny prime prime took like a head coach from the mac he stepped down as like a head coach from kent state and now he's just being the oc so yeah and he got he got alabama's co dc as his oh he did coordinator yeah right Wow, is it that is it that younger looking dude? No, I think it was the older guy. Oh, okay. Then not the young dude that looks like that fat Perez guy, the golfer. But they, it'll be interesting to watch next year. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Colorado. Yeah. How is he, that? How is the like like the relationship with Colorado? Like who's like the the team that you know you're just gonna beat up on in the Pac-12? Or who, who? How has that changed this year with like new staffs and obviously USC kind of coming uh, in? I mean, like, okay, obviously, like, going to the Colorado game, we we acknowledge that they weren't a very good football team. But <laughs> um, for the offensive line, I'll say, like, the strength of their team was their D-line. Like, they had to do – their nose tackle was 6'6", 330. Like, he was a big boy. They had a really good uh, four-eye. 
who was a sixth year senior guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they had a couple guys off the edge that can rush. So mm-hmm. even though like going to that game, we knew like, you know, we can go out and not play our best ball and we'll still win. As an O-line, we we kind of had to like really mentally prepare for that game. Like, all right, like this is just, this is still going to be a battle. You know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, they had some dudes up front that were going to give us a prob- uh give us challenges, but um, you know how right. it is. I mean, you're definitely right. Um, I think, I think for the O-line position in general, like, I don't really think there's a, like a game off per se, just because they're going to have never. like the talent level is going to be relatively the same. And they're going to have either a dude who's so twitchy that you just can't, you can't, take a second or this guy who's just going to be 320 340 who's going to try and walk you down yeah I mean as an O-lineman there you can't take a game off like I think there's there's certain positions where you definitely can Mm -hmm. you know you can get away with it and you know it's not going to be as noticeable but I think if you're an offensive lineman and you go into a game thinking like yeah oh it's good we're chilling today like that's the game you're going to give up three sacks and it's not going to be good for you brother that's not the process yeah Ryan like holy shit like Kids, if you're listening, don't listen to Ryan Walk here. I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm t- <laughs> hey, I'm telling how it is, man. I'm telling how it is. There's dudes who go into games, they, like they're chilling that day. But if you're an offensive lineman and you do that, it's going to be a long day. I promise you that much. <laughs> Got to stay on that edge. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I think Coach Prime will definitely dominate the portal. And since we're talking about the portal, I know you entered the portal. You are a portal alum. Tyler, mm-hmm. you want to talk about that a little bit because I, it's U. crazy right now. Like, there's uh, I'm, yeah, I'm you a, you graduated Portal U. Yeah, I'm a I'm a Portal alum one year too early. I would say <laughs> before before all this money was being thrown around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because holy shit, it's like, I mean, what's crazy is you know, obviously, um, my personal opinion is that you should be throwing money to guys on the team, and I feel like Texas Tech has done a good job with that with their collective, and they they paid scholarship band walk-ons guys alike same amount of money but I feel like you should be paying guys who've stayed on the team or to come back and some random recruit you don't really know much about you know yeah. six figures to come there um but yeah like obviously when I first entered the portal it was it was crazy I mean just driving back home from Oregon like the whole way in the car we're just talking to coaches and it was kind of weird hearing some of their tactics some of them were kind of going up for the, the love selling tactic or like some of them would try and like bash other schools like oh you don't want to go there they got this this and this going on and really either one is just kind of like I know you're being fake like what like I really wanted to really was listening to the coaches you were just straight up I mean and like I think for people in the portal um what you should look for is just an opportunity to go and compete you know a coaching staff that seems genuine I know it's obviously hard with recruiting skills but and then there and then just like some guys on the team that you know and can relate to just because like I said before, the teammates and then the actual school is something you're going to resonate with more than just the actual your position coach because, like I said, they're going to do whatever they think's best. Did you? I, did you? Go ahead, Ryan. I was going to say I can second that because I sat in the living room while Tyler had a lot of his calls with other coaches, <laughs> so I got to hear a lot of the pitches <laughs> from other schools. Ryan was an advisor. Uh, yeah, I was. I was kind of. Uh, I was an advisor to Tyler and his advisor uh, agent. Process. Yeah. Yeah. No. no Ryan, definitely Jordan, not an agent. Jordan, but Jordan was in the my room with me too. She was kind of my marketing and agent person as well. And then Ryan was there with some of those University of Arizona talks. And we were <laughs> I heard I heard up. Arizona's pitch. I heard Cal's pitch. Yeah. Um, so you know, I was I was kind of along for the ride there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, it was cool. I mean, you know, it's it was obviously cool to. Um, to kind of get recruited again, but it really was, you know, I can't imagine for guys um, coming out in the portal now and, and even for coaches because you just kind of get certain different kind of cats who are maybe just looking for money more than actually trying to find a new home. And that's kind of the, the crappy part about it is because I feel like um, coming here, you know, I really – I feel like I came here for the right reasons and it's paid off just because, you know, I love it. I love being here. Obviously, it sucks that I got injured, and but I think – what I know now and, you know, kind of the offense that I'm playing in, it's just like, it's night and day. I think we can talk, talk, get into that more about, you know, more scheme wise, but it's just, I, I can't imagine being in the portal now. We're not big numbers guys on this podcast, but yeah. uh, Ryan is, but me and Brad, you know, we just like, you know, striking someone in the geometric center. But uh, I mean, uh, you talk about like, I think what you said where, you said if you know a guy on the team, I think that's like kind of priceless knowledge if you're in the portal and looking at a school because they'll actually like tell you how it is, not yeah. a coach will recruit. So did you know anyone 
at Texas Tech before you went there, or were you just yeah. going to just so kind of like Colin school? Schooler, um, All right, right. Brandon Schooler's brother. He was at U of A, and then he transferred here. Um, and he was just straight up. I mean, he, if you guys know him, obviously he's just he's one of the coolest dudes you'll ever meet. Just really chill. He was just straight up. He's like, dude, everyone here is like. I remember what he told me. He's like, everyone here is like, they're all just like Christian people. Like, they're not like over in your face, but they're just like the most nice people you ever meet. Like, everyone on the dude, everyone on the team, they're just like, just workhorses. Like, all these like kids from West Texas or just like middle of nowhere, Texas. They're, they're, they remind me a lot of like Ryan, where you're just, they're like small town kids who just come in as walk ons or come in, but they'll like just fucking, they'll just beat the shit out of you and they'll just work every single day. <laughs> and a lot of these wide receivers, I was just like, they're six five, six four from like East Texas, and they run like a four four. I'm like, what, where where do these guys come from? And they're like three star recruits. So I think that was really was attractive. Was kind of that that West Texas mentality of of just kind of hard nosed blue collar people. Um, and then obviously the chance to come in and play. But it was kind of cool talking to Colin Schooler and then some other guys um, who recruited me on the team throughout that process. And I mean, they're they're super down to earth. Yeah, that's awesome yeah, to that's hear. Awesome. Um, talk a little bit more about like the football transition from Oregon to Texas. Um, obviously, probably different style of offense than what you ran. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people like to make a big deal of like the difference in conferences. So mm-hmm. did, did you see much of a difference in Pac-12 compared to Big 12 or anything like that? Yeah, um, I think for the, the address of conference one first, I really felt like um, the Pac-12 had higher levels of some skill talent, maybe just at Oregon and like Washington and USC that I've seen just like flashy guys. Um, but I felt like there was more of a drop off. I feel like in the big 12, I think every single week, like you're going to face some dudes like on every single team. They're really, like you said before, especially for line, there's not really like a game off. And especially this year, like Kansas has always been that team where, you know, like, you know, you're probably going to win, but they, I mean, they're, they're bowl eligible this time for the first time in however many years, and they're beating the crap out of some teams. Yeah. I um, mean, you're going against uh, Texas, who's probably more talent more talented than anybody in the nation. I mean, they almost beat Alabama, and then, you know, we beat them, and then, you know, we'll lose to Kansas State or something like that. It's, it's just Kansas State, TCU, Oklahoma State, West Virginia. There's not much of a drop-off, I felt like, compared to the Pac-12. Uh, maybe where there's some teams and obviously they're still going to be good, but I feel like maybe just some of those linebacker and the D line and O line is probably a little bit more um, enhanced. Yeah. We'll see how that uh, like changes with the portal, right? Because all of a sudden you're see- you might see a team like Colorado who for the past mm-hmm. X amount of years, hasn't really been a true threat to win the PAC 12 championship. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, under new leadership, you bring in a few key players you got a few Mm -hmm. new coaches you can change a program virtually in one year now i mean look at usc right yeah 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 and vice versa with oklahoma you know they obviously have some you guys played them they got some some dudes i mean they're gonna have some dudes no matter what but you know they go six and six six and six this year with a new staff um britain like vice versa you know texas tech or others like kansas state maybe got teams who don't get as much recruits and kansas state wins the big 12 and you know they're i mean they're always gonna be a tough ass team to play tcu this year out of nowhere <clears throat> going undefeated and you know they're, yeah. they're legit <clears throat> but what's going to be interesting i think this next year that i wasn't even thinking about is with the addition of four new teams of the big 12 because we're getting that's right ucf houston cincinnati um and the mormons yeah and byu yeah um and those i mean the, right. those are those are good ass teams i think like BYU, they're beating the crap out of everybody, almost everybody they play, except for you guys. But besides Oregon, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, guys, it's that was, a big wall right there. On that week. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you talk, Texas you got, and you OU t- leave yeah. it. But I think everybody's kind of happy with that because nobody really liked them anyways. Yeah, it's gonna be. It, yeah, it's definitely gonna be wild. Um, I think I think eventually it'll just be like two two like huge conferences with the Big Ten and the SEC, and then like eventually a third huge conference with like Big Twelve just cleaning up everyone else, and it's just gonna be kind of just like three huge divisions. It's gonna be like the NFL, but mm-hmm. they all are playing for the twelve team playoff, <clears throat> and there's gonna be like four lost teams in that playoff now with the twelve teams. So it's gonna be pretty yeah. crazy. 
What was interesting too is <clears throat> kind of like where your original question, Ryan, is like the transition from like Oregon to Texas. And I think just like the biggest difference I've seen is just the culture wise. You know, obviously Oregon's fans are they're gonna be crazy no matter what, just because of the large presence and kind of the logo and obviously stuff like that. But more of like the culture of just like the Southern football, Texas football, just it was just kind of a, a an eye opening thing where everybody's everybody's just fully ingrained to it and it's kind of really makes it a lot of fun to play under and but also same thing with Oregon. There's gonna be some fair weather fans sometimes. Oh, no doubt. We got booed in our own stadium last year, you know, so that's uh, – <laughs> we experienced that a little bit. Multiple uh, times. Yeah. Yeah, that but, was uh, that was tough. Yeah, but Texas forever. Guns up. Yeah. Guns up, Guns. baby. Guns up. Yeah. So I think we also want to touch a little bit on – to us, what we saw as one of the – as this college football world is transforming, obviously, with the transfer portal, but also with NIL – we saw your NIL gift, or I don't know what you'd call it, a gift, a promise for life, for love, for <laughs> happiness. Engagement. That's a good the, way to put it. Engagement ring. Tell us about that story. Yeah, so I think, I mean, a lot, that one was, it was more kind of blown up to seem as like this huge like deal, but really, um, I just got a discount on the ring just because at the, <laughs> <laughs> like the, a bunch of store, a bunch of, uh, media outlets ran with it you know like i'm using nil because i mean it is a cool deal like you're, a lot of guys just use nil to get a car or some shit like that where i really was just kind of doing it because i knew i was going to propose to her um I, I had a good relationship with the ring place and i was like hey i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be posting this on, on social media it's like would you guys want to get tagged in it um for like a discount on the ring and they're like yeah that'd be awesome and so that was kind of really what it boiled down to but you know it's kind of been push to more of like I got the whole engagement free and I got the ring free I'm like no dude this was not that <laughs> wasn't that much but it, it's still been pretty cool to kind of just I have used it to stuff I've really been passionate about just like my apartment um stuff getting guys yeah, stuff on a team like really fun one I've done this year is just the O-line meals I'm sure Ryan and you kind of done some similar things there but I think that's been the coolest part more than just like paying dudes in the portal is kind of just some of those liberties where you know back in 2018 2019 where you're struggling to pay for hawaiian time or chipotle you don't have to think <laughs> about as much anymore but uh yeah. no yeah that's right and your guys collective helps out a lot with that you said right yeah so they do uh every scholarship player or not everyone it really you have to be going to all your classes and you have to do community service hours um and you get twenty five thousand uh, dollars per year and they just they split, it, they split it up monthly so it's so what do you give? <laughs> like what is like what's the transaction though? Like you're getting twenty five thousand for what? What do you so give? So basically twenty five hundred a month, however many months that is. Um, and then you have to do, yeah, obviously. Then you have to do two, um, two community service deals, um, in the fall and two in the spring, and then you have to just be out good standing in all your classes and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a, it's with the Matador, it's with the Matador Club, it's with a it's with another um i guess company it's kind of similar to what is it called division street yeah. yeah got it um i guess it'd be similar to that um and then they just kind of pay you through there i mean some other the basketball team has one and a lot of other schools have it as well but i think that's, so yeah. it's kind of the first where we included walk-ons and other guys who really deserved it yeah that's awesome yeah. especially throwing in the community service uh incentive mm. there like that's that's yeah. a really neat aspect because i know we we have something similar in terms of the academic good standing but um there's no ness like you don't have to do community service if you don't want to even though it's it's encouraged within the program <clears throat> but yeah that's something that's... that i really noticed here has kind of been more of a priority um even through different staffs is like i've had a lot of fun just kind of going to like the food st shelter and stuff like that and even just like hanging out with a bunch of people um at a bunch of elementary schools stuff like that to where they kind of made it a priority as far as like the, almost the academic things like that's got to happen but it's more like you have to get a certain amount of hours in to even to get the check so i think that was a pretty cool deal that they did that's a that's a great way to like be involved in the community too and because yeah. west texas like not really huge cities out there so it's a great way you know because you're kind of like the yeah, hometown that, team really it's just lubbock and because yeah. lubbock is i mean you can get anywhere in lubbock in probably 10 20 minutes but outside of it there's no city for two hours plus it's kind of like crazy 
It's like Mars. Like Eugene, but like <laughs> Dallas is Dallas Fort Worth is five hours away, five, six hours. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. But that, that community service for sure drives uh fan and community engagement too, which yeah. goes back to what you were talking about with you know the fans down there in Lubbock. Oh yeah. Um, I mean people drive <clears throat> from Amarillo, from from yeah, from Dallas, from Midland, from Odessa, like all over the place, all these all these neighboring cities to, to Lubbock. That's why they call it the hub city, just because it really has everything um, to come watch tech games and just kind of that blue collar mentality. I think that's what tech really embodies that I kind of like is we don't get any state money either. All the state money, because that's why Texas UT has the biggest endowment in the, the nation, almost more than, I guess, second to Stanford maybe, um, is because all the state money runs through UT and they get all the nicest things and all the money to pay all the, their kids all they want. And we're kind of this, this like blue collar agriculture school at, with cotton and oil and stuff like that. But we just beat the shit out of you. We don't really care. So that's what I love that, it. Hell that yeah. was a, kind of the mindset that I was like, you know, and that's kind of what been my whole mindset is coming back is like, you know, screw everybody. We don't care if it's Oklahoma or Texas or whoever, um, you know. Wow, those are fighting words. It's getting yeah. fired up right now, man. 2023 um, season that's, can't that's... come soon enough. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this was the first year in Texas Tech school history we beat Oklahoma and Texas in the same year. Um, and I think that's kind of – you're starting to see that shift in mentality. Um, I think when I first got here <clears throat> um, with the previous staff and um, kind of the end of Coach Kingsbury's staff is like everybody was just kind of okay with losing. You know, they would just go out party after, we'll have a good time, and it was just a good experience where I think now and I think – and that's something I took from Oregon is that, you know, you go into it, you expect to win. Like if you don't win, then it's a problem. Um, and I think that's kind of been more the mentality that I've kind of tried to bring to some of the guys and obviously the coaching staff here with Coach McGuire, they've done the same thing. All that, all that Texas State money just, just so they can go to the Alamo Bowl every year for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You talked about beating Oklahoma and Texas first time in ever in the same season what what are your favorite places to play in the big 12 obviously besides Lubbock mm. Mm. I think man, that's tough I think uh West Virginia has got probably one of the best atmospheres just because wow. it's it's like in the middle of nowhere and that just things get funky up there like you never know what's going to happen I've heard that's a really that's that one's really fun um I I don't like TCUs because they don't really have like any cool traditions. Like I always like whoever we're playing. Like I want like some that I always yeah. love with Morgan's tradition. Fourth quarter, just shout like that's something yeah. that you're always gonna have a good time. I always love that pageantry. Yeah, mm -hmm. Texas Tech has a good one, but like I really gravitate towards teams that really have a good kind of tradition towards that. Um, UT, like you play playing at UT, they're gonna have 110,000 fans in the stadium, but they're gonna be the quietest you know, 110,000 fans you've ever played in front of just because they're, they're front runners. And, but, uh, I think probably West Virginia, um, Oklahoma state's a good one. I think, uh, Kansas state's fun too. I think it's, it's been pretty interesting just because it's kind of com compared to Pac-12 where, you know, like there's going to be two games like Stanford and Cal where it's just, like, there's just going to be nobody there and it's going to yeah. be kind of quiet. Playing at the yeah. library. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and up to last year, USC was also like one of those library. Right. Type yeah. Places. USC was like, even UCLA. in the Pac-12 championship. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not even half the stadium is full. Yeah. yeah well, granted, I think, I think we played there literally when there were no fans for COVID, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. The Coliseum <laughs> with no fans was surreal. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. You, you, got, you said, yeah, don't you guys have the tortilla thing? What is that? Yeah. yeah so it's, it stemmed back from, you know, a while ago, um, kind of with the rivalry with Texas A&M, where this reporter called Tech um, or Lubbock flat as a tortilla, because, I mean, Lubbock is flat. There's not – you can't see anything for, like, hundreds of miles because it's just in the plains. Um, I think in, in the next games, like, everybody started throwing tortillas at them and shit, and it kind of <laughs> just stemmed from there. So every kickoff, every touchdown – all the fans throw tortillas onto the field and it's, it's a pretty cool thing to see because just a bunch of tortillas just come flying and they, they're hitting opposing players are hitting everybody. Um, and it really kind of, that's kind of the soft wave because it used to be back in like the um, 
early 2000s and the 2010s where they were they were throwing like beer cans and like nails at opposing teams. Oh, well, that's that's a little <laughs> sometimes <laughs> nails. nails. Just throwing last knives year, and brace Last blades year we and... had we lost like 50 yards in penalties because fans were throwing beer cans at people um, on the field. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm telling you, they get rowdy. Hell yeah. Because everyone, if it's a night game and love it, like, that's kind of one thing, like, you don't you don't want to play here because, like, everyone by game time is going to be hammered, like, hammered drunk. They're they're partying. Like, we've had, like, Shaq and Waka Flocka come be a DJ. Like, it's just like a, it's like a redneck Arizona State almost. And everybody's just having a good time. And then out in the field it gets it gets pretty loud so it's it's a good t- it's pretty fun i will like say fun. uh <clears throat> this woman when we played at oregon state this year when we were walking up at halftime dumped her entire beer on jake shipley's oh. head when we were walking <laughs> <laughs> like she leaned over because like you know how that tunnel is and, like there's yeah this... it's right next to the stands yeah yeah yep she leaned over poured dropped the entire beer on like jake shipley and karsten battles <laughs> and then just leaned right back over <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I, I, I would be so pissed if that happened. <laughs> yeah, no, that's some of your Ryan and Nate, Nate, Brad, you guys can kind of answer it. Is what <clears throat> what's been the best like opposing team banter from like a fan? Like, what's been the best one that you've heard? Well, tell I'm glad, glad you asked because I would say the best Great banter question, is um, that I've heard from my like, opposing team. It's got to be when I was down in the stands this year for watching Georgia versus Oregon and <laughs> watching Ryan out there on the field, the Georgia fans. So Bo Nix's p- parents or his mom and his wife were like two rows behind me. Cause I'm in like the family section and somehow the Georgia fans found out that they were sitting there and like, I'll, I can go ahead and say like, like Georgia is lucky. Like there wasn't, cameras out like some of those fans are lucky like there were no cameras around because there was a uh, you know borderline hate crime words getting thrown around about bonix mm. that was that was, that was honestly the worst i think i've ever seen scc baby gotta love yeah. it mm-hmm. it's just it just means more down there just means more <clears throat> hate crimes um, hate crimes. yeah my yeah my worst one I, I've told it on the podcast before, but it was at Washington State in 2018. Mm-hmm. You you went to that game, right? Yeah. When they had game day, Gardner Minshew yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I got told by one of their students that I fucking sucked and I know it. So that was a tough one. Because <laughs> if we were warming up right in that end zone where the student section is, it's yeah. so like that's like a student was like maybe like six feet away from me. And I so I just heard it loud and clear. Hey, 53, you fucking suck and you know it. Yeah. No, the the one thing that that it's kind of shitty, but Oklahoma <clears throat> State and TCU like they're not like no joke like four feet away from the opposing like from the opposing t- team's bench. Yeah, and I mean it was bad at TCU. I went in and they're you know they're ranked number four in the country. Like they're just having a great time, and I I come into the game and they're these just like these these frat kids are just going at me the whole game. Like, yeah, no wonder you transferred from Oregon. You suck. You can't play here anyways. <laughs> They're just going in. They're like, oh, my God, what kind of throw was that? Like, my first throw, I come in the game. I, I miss it high. We come in off the sideline. I'm like, all right, all right, I'm good. And then they're just talking crap the whole way. It's like, man, I could have made that throw. You F and blah, 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 blah. Next drive, I go out and throw a touchdown. I come back. I'm just, like, flipping them off, saying, get that, buddy. And it's just like. Get that, buddy. It's a good I, – but I love that shit, though. I'm like, dude, you bet – like, if I'm sitting right there and if I was, like, a normal person – like who has nothing going for me in my life and I'm just at a football game drinking beer and I'm in the front row of the student section, I would be going off. <laughs> if, not, if you're not in the front row, you better have that that energy because you best believe when we go run it, run it down your throat, we're going to come back talking crap to you. And I think that's been the, that's the funnest part about it is, is, is going to, is playing away. Is, do you guys like playing away? Yeah. Or home more? That's, oh, that's, away. that's always the best. Yeah. When you silence a crowd, like I'll say like Ohio State in Crazy. 21. Oh, I bet. Dude, hearing 105 go quiet, there's, there's no That's the feeling. one thing is weird is we played in one of the most satisfying wins. We went to Iowa State and after, you know, obviously losing the Fiesta Bowl to Iowa State and mm-hmm. all the, the rigmarole that happened with that and playing half the game. But like going up there, 
and it's it's five degrees and it like snow still on like it literally was like freezing and it was a night game and like every time you scored like it was just quiet like it was like it's just almost backwards because like you know if you throw it or something something happens and the, the crowd erupts you're like oh shit but if you think yeah. if something happens and like it's just quiet you know it's like kind of backwards where you're like okay something good happened yeah yeah no that's nice also i just wanted to touch on this real quick you are most definitely i don't think you're doing it on purpose you're most definitely speaking with somewhat of a southern accent right now and <laughs> not really a hundred percent man you're like coach oh Get that little southern twang to you after a year. Yeah, goes I mean, to Texas my, for two years. This is my, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going on my third year. This is going on my third year because I came to Lubbock in like January, February. Right, twenty twenty one of twenty twenty one. It hasn't even been two calendar years. Oh, it's, oh right. <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on. That's why he's your agent. <laughs> second yeah, right, year. Right, this is my third moves. year in, in education though here i don't know i guess i'm tripping no because the covid season was 2020 yeah, yeah. Right, right, left right, right, right. you left like the first week in february of 2021 well i mean if you would if you would live here and like most of the people who talk it's just like i mean it, it, it's, it's an oh, awesome accent i'm not saying i wouldn't do it but i'm still gonna make fun of you for doing no, it <laughs> like i'd be throwing around y'all and like oh my, oh, ryan, thought... ryan does it if they play a game in the south like he's throwing around <laughs> y'all during the game like y'all's just a be- it's just an elite term because like nobody wants to say you guys like how are you guys doing it's like how are y'all doing for... i like that there it That's is good. there it is yeah, uh, yeah, like ryan... yeah that was that was a little Texas slang right there. I like that. Yeah. In the yeah. Alamo Bowl last year, Ryan started to speak a little Spanish by the end of the week that we were there. So, I oh. mean, he really gets cultured when he goes on the road. Yeah. I mean, yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. Evan, <laughs> I think you start to change your lingo when you, li- you live here more. But Yeah. No, that's that's funny. I mean, see, uh, what other, like, southern things are there in, like, Texas that just wouldn't see in Oregon? I feel like everyone always asks me, like, what's, like, what are the people like in Oregon? And I'm like, Honestly, there's like to me two types of people, um, which is super almost granola nature y type folks, and then everyone else who's like essentially normal. And that's like 80, it's, it's like, to me, it was like a true like 60 40 split because you'll find a lot of you can find some weird people in Oregon, let's be honest, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I feel like Eugene, like, like who was born and raised in Eugene, yeah. <laughs> or partly yeah, shit Ryan. <laughs> easy tyler easy your fiance is from eugene take it easy <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, just, I'm just making fun of the podcast member from sheldon yeah. i think for you saying brad i think eugene it's like the granola type or it's like if you say anything non-pc like i'm you're going you're getting slandered and you're you're getting canceled it's a hate crime or there's like a the, the other type that's like almost like so trump that it's like annoying like they're like so redneck that it's like like come on bro like they're just like either really redneck or granola i think there's just that clash there no and eugene because there's just, i feel like there's just like all farm people in like the, the the rural part of eugene or it's like you live in portland or, or eugene and you you're in the university but yeah. in tech in texas um what i thought and i feel like most people stereotypes is like everybody's just like racist and everybody's like super like kick down here <clears throat> and they're like there's racist people everywhere for one, but I feel like that's kind of, it really kind of, I was like definitely wrong about it because everyone here is, they obviously wear like cowboy boots and jeans to the facility sometimes, or like we wore cowboy hats on like on the road, but like everyone, and they'll believe in certain things, but they're like probably, kind of sick. they're some of the nicest people I've ever met as far as like, they're going to take your hat off. They're going to like, they're always opening doors. They're gonna, like, every time I introduce Jordan to somebody like this, it could be like a six, seven, like just, farmer dude he's gonna take his hat off take like he's gonna introduce himself in like a really respectful way like everybody's super down to earth i feel like it's a southern even, hospitality like, yeah i mean I, I think that it really is true though because like on the drive over here when i first was moving here like there was this random old lady at a gas station she's like she knew like i was gonna be on the football team she's like hey anytime you want like anytime you want some food or dinner like you can come over stay over here with us like i'll make you food anytime. oh yeah she was being legit and i mean there's been a bunch of times where um i think just some of that the hospitality where you it's really appreciated because some days you you know maybe you don't really feel like doing much 
Yeah, no, that's that's fair and that's that's accurate. And I mean, I wonder what you know, Ryan. You definitely have a different you know idea about Oregon. And Nate, I feel like Portland is its own its own ball of wax, though. All right, like Portland is a whole different. <laughs> sub- it's like a snow Oregon. globe, dude. Yeah. So I don't know. I just you bring that up though. That southern hospitality, I've always loved that. And that's why I've always enjoyed our bowl games in the mm-hmm. south whenever we've been able to play there so yeah i mean it's just like i've like i've, I've just gone hunting for a bunch for the first time recently like they just take me out there and saw that have like this multi multi-million dollar ranch or they like i've learned how to freaking cook steak and not boil uh chicken ryan with some salt you learned learn how to cook anything you learn salt how to and pepper anything. to taste did you say yeah salt and pepper to taste there it is i learned there how to cook some other food and there's like also the one that i forgot to mention is just like the no oh my god jordan she's peeing um, <laughs> we got a new dog, dog there or new, a, new yeah, dog owner baby. by the way new dog <laughs> owner yes oh, she a human or a dog back there? <laughs> we got a we got a puppy. We got a puppy. Say hi, Murphy. Uh, Same thing. Same thing. Uh, it's a it's a baby. What, what, is that a golden? Yeah, it's a golden retriever. Why would you do that? All have- right, all right, Tyler. Can we address one thing though? Like, yeah, you clearly stole my dog Murphy's name and just used it as your own. <laughs> can, can we address that right now? Like, I know you've met Murphy before. That's like, crazy. It's it's uh it's the mom, right? Murphy yes. is the mom. Yes. That's right. Dude, I had no idea. We, we told. I totally forgot. Wild. For sure. For sure. For sure. It's a good name. <laughs> no, we, how we, got the name. we did it from from Interstellar, and the main the main character or the girl's name's Murph or Murphy. It's actually a perfect segue into yeah, like our holy next, lob. That's our, our next, that's uh, our favorite movie, so that's why we did it. Into our, well, well, you lobbed us right into our power ranking segment that we're going to do. Go. Uh, we know that, Tyler, you're a big movie guy. All of us. Ooh, we like huge. our movies here. So uh, power, power rankings. We will uh, top three and an honorable mention of your favorite movies. So uh, we let our guests go first. Tyler, yep. yeah. lead us off. Oh, man. So man. You know how hard this is, but uh, I- I'm a huge Christopher Nolan guy. He's one of my favorite directors, so Whoa, wait, wait, sorry to interrupt you. Can I can we do no comedy movies? Because I feel like comedy and like it's yeah. a it's a whole different thing. It's a whole <laughs> comedy comedy <laughs> yeah. movies oh, kind of its own thing. So like let's just yeah. do like non-comedy yeah. movies. Sorry, Christopher Nolan, continue. Yeah. Okay. Um but I think one and two mm-hmm. off the bat is is Dark Knight and then Interstellar. Um for me. I think it's just it's just on the <clears throat> Dark Knight. I, I I I will die on that hill. Um you're dead on the hill. Uh, yeah, but and I think three three is where it comes in. I think it can go a lot of directions. Um, I, I'm thinking of, you know, Shawshank Redemption. I'm thinking, I'm glad you said no comedy because that would have been so comedy would have been up there. Um, I feel like I'll just put Shawshank Redemption in there, and then honorable mention. Um, oh man, let's go with uh. Have you guys seen Arrival? Yeah. No. Yeah, great movie. Ryan, add it to your list, please. Yeah, let's go with Arrival. That's one that just comes to mind. I think there's there's a bunch that I, I have, but I still feel like those Christopher Nolan movies and his whole his whole collection is is really good. And I, I think before you what you guys go is um, I forgot the name of it, but it's oh, it's I remember what it's called. It's The Prestige by Chris. It's by Christopher Nolan. Have you ever seen that, Nate or Brad? I think so. I I, I'll have to so. freshen it's, uh, up on it though. Like What's a, it about? Uh, it's about a, two magicians, um, kind of in the early 20th century. Uh, it's like it's like a thriller. It's like a really crazy thriller, kind of similar to Inception almost. That the same kind of vibes, but it's the the prestige, same director. Yeah, wow. Uh, so, side note: before uh, the hosts go, Ryan has never seen any movie ever, and. The only reason he's seen movies is when me, Tyler, and Alex were his roommates. We would just browbeat him until he goes in his room and watches movies because he just never saw any. They didn't have that any is, like blockbusters or anything in Eugene, apparently. That is actually factually correct. I haven't seen very many movies until college, but no, I'm, I'm up to date on like all the classics now. Like I've seen pretty much all the classics. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. You're up. You want me to go next? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to go. I'll start with honorable mention. Got to give it a shout out. I know Tyler already said it, but The Dark Knight, it's it's my number one. Like Heath Ledger is the greatest performance in acting history. Oh, um, dude, all right. Chill. All right. 
I said what no. I said. I said what no, I said. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Go ahead. The best it performance in acting history. All right. That's <laughs> put the Joker. Dude. Like, let's relax. He literally All died, right. Brad. He died for that role. It's true. He All right, number died. three. Number three, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh the town. I think that's Ooh. a good movie. Yeah, really, really like that movie. Uh, ben number Affleck. two, yeah, Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. Number two, I'm gonna kind of same, same uh, genre movie. I'm gonna go The Departed. Okay. Just a, uh, just a big Boston guy. Apparently, I am. Uh, and then number one, kind of disappointed you took Shawshank and Dark Knight from me because I was hoping I'd get one of those in my top three. But, oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go Good Will Hunting. I like that. Number one, because I'm a math guy, so. Kind of a nerd, yeah. big numbers guy. You had a you had a similar story, Ryan. Like we just found you. You were like a janitor, and you were just like really good at math. And like, <laughs> like maybe this guy can like block really good. And now you Tyler, know, like a, oh, Tyler took me in. That, that, that's Ryan's character arc. He <laughs> found you in like the the halls of Sheldon High School, like just in the math well, club. I did used to work at the Albertsons on thirtieth. So I mean, wow. you guys found me checking checking groceries at you're the Albertsons. You're basically Kurt Warner. <laughs> you're just drawing plays on the whiteboard of mario cristobal's house <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, um, stop that i think, I, think I ended last so we'll let brad end so i'll i'll go um so my top three i'm gonna go with inglorious bastards mm. Because I'm, a, I'm a, I could, I could just name like three Tarantino movies because I'm a huge Tarantino fan. But amazing, I, I won't. But yeah, I mean, greatest director of all time. But mm-hmm. anyways, uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go next. I could watch it every month of the year. Goodfellas, mm-hmm. an all time classic. Um, and then for my third one. It's kind of more recent, but uh, it's one of my favorite movies. It's probably my favorite movie of all time, The Great Gatsby with Leo DiCaprio. And then my honorable mention will be because I'm kind of like a, you know, Game of Thrones nerd. uh, Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings, the last one. um, Return of the King. All time. Way ahead of its time. Because that movie came out in like 2003 or whatever. Way ahead of its time. Great movie. The the CGI, the was crazy for being yeah. so early in the decade it was the whole series was awesome what's but... kind of crazy is side note before brad goes is that um the benefit don't really only a couple benefits of breaking my collarbone again twice is i i binge watch <laughs> game of thrones in a matter of like three weeks all eight seasons what's up man? yeah it's a it's guess, one of those shows guess. you feel so left out of when everyone gets yeah. probably talking about it huh mm-hmm. yeah you I, probably... I, I, I think you guys are probably the main ones talking about Game of Thrones. <laughs> I was I was cussing at you in the uh, in the in our little yes living room saying, "Dude, I'm go like, watch no it right way. now." It's good, and I and I I watched it all, and it's probably one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I will stand. Yep. Yep. I, you will. I'll give you that credit. So yep. You just gotta stick with it past like the, halfway through the first season, then you're kind of hooked. Dude, that it's point so out. horny. Yeah. It's so horny in the first season. It was <laughs> bonk. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Why is this girl getting raped right now? <laughs> I mean, it is HBO, so yeah. anything like, goes. But yeah, it, it is good. Brad, go ahead. I greatest, you. greatest TV show of all time. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go to number hmm. number three for me: Avengers Endgame. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not mad at you. The Marvel movie. verse, I like it. Like I, I think we, it was a great movie. You all remember when we first watched Endgame? Yes. Team in the yes. Theaters. theaters. Yes. That was a that was an iconic moment in my my human life. Yeah. yeah. When Black Panther got the Infinity Gauntlet, our team went crazy. It was actually yeah. that was the most insane thing ever. Um, that was crazy. Yeah. No, okay. Like, I, I I realized what you're saying. I thought you never mind. <laughs> I was like Black Panther didn't get any Infinity Gauntlet, but obviously he did pick it up one time. Uh, yeah. An Infinity. Uh, all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no. Uh, number two to me, Shutter Island. I don't know if anyone said Good that. Choice. Good choice. Number one, Django Unchained. Nice. And an honorable mention, just because I don't even think it's that great of a movie when I rewatch it now, but the first time I watched it, it, I think I hit puberty the first time I watched this movie, and that was 300. 
right at the start. <laughs> no, Brad, I, I I totally agree with you. I I've watched that movie before, like a, a before an early practice or like a game many times, just to like build testosterone in my body <laughs> before the game. Because I'm yeah. like, yeah, no, that's right. You like wish you're a Spartan, like no, in the yeah. gates of hell, like fighting next to one another. Speaking of testosterone, have you guys kept up with like the Liver King about all that stuff that happened this yeah. week with him? Yeah, how he's just. I've seen it on the talk. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a fraud. Twelve k worth of steroids a month, like yeah, it's wild. It's I, kind of they're just like, repeatedly why don't, why don't saying I'm so like natty. Me. Why don't you look like that though? Like you, that could be you. Yeah, if I was on t- testosterone, trend, HGH yeah. weekly, so nothing's stopping you, man. It's not like yeah, I mean test. nothing's. I mean, when we interview you in a year or two years, you know, when you're starting in the league for like. <laughs> I don't know, like the Packers. Like I'm just gonna be like Liver King doing shirtless interviews. So, so if it's hook, this is how you get like me, and not be a wimp. <laughs> my my nine ancestral tenants. You already have a good name. It's it's hook, man. Yeah. Shout what out. Was shout it, out what was his PEDs? He was like perform, execute, and dominate, or prepare, execute, he's like, dominate. He's like, I don't do. He's like I don't do PEDs. Never have done. I perform. <laughs> I prepare, I execute, and I dominate. Those are my PEDs. <laughs> I think Meanwhile, like, he just has a needle just shooting him up, him up after the interview. I think it's like uh, the funniest clip where it's like, that was a lie. Have you seen, have you seen that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it did. that was the. He's like, yeah, I told, I said I never did steroids. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so back to wrap up our power rankings, did we miss it? Did you leave out any? You are totally fond of that you want to add tyler anyone else no i think we should do a little special segment to to end it off is i think we should throw in some comedy movies okay i can get down yeah we're we're gonna go let's just go top two your own top two of of comedy movies and you guys can start it off or if you want me to like what a guest bringing segments to the show there we go wild this is awesome. First, he asked us a question, like he was hosting the podcast. Now it he's was a good question. Like, yeah. it was, no, it was. I'm not hating. I'm just, yeah. I, I, you know, I, you know, I'm just gonna cut you off right there. I'm gonna start off with my with the step brothers <laughs> with, with, with the, the re interview technique. Where no, I'm asking you this question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, number two, I mean, it could be number one. It probably is number one. Is uh, the other guys, and I, I use Excellent. the other guys references to this day, um, whether whether it's with Forsyth or just just watching <laughs> just with my own teammates here now it's it's, it's one of the greatest yes it was i'll yes. uh, i'll rattle off two quick ones uh, i'm gonna go wedding crashers ah and, and super bad those are, those are my top really ones. took my two they're damn good yes ones. super super bad god i love that movie uh, all right let me... all right i'll go next sorry nate <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding nate. you can go no you go i ryan took my two all right zoolander austin powers Gold member. Duh. Let's go. I like the the Zoolander. The memes on TikTok have been flowing lately. Oh yeah, the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hansel walks by. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, can you do that again? We actually gotta get our thumbnail. So, oh, uh, there we go. The Zoolander face. Hansel. Uh, all right. I'll 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 wrap it up. Um, I think. God, you guys took all the good ones. Um, I'm gonna go with uh 21 Jump Street classic, you know, Jonah Hill, Channing Tatum, hilarious. And then I'm gonna go hmm, 40 year old virgin because I'm a big Steve Carell fan. That one hits close to home, huh, man? <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah, all right, all right. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, Crazy Stupid Love instead. Sorry, that one doesn't. That one doesn't hit close. Home. I'm sorry. You, you're a big Michael Scott guy. Yeah, Michael Scott. Michael Scarn. Sorry. Michael uh, Scarn. but yeah, Ryan, you wanna you wanna do the last uh, little segment we got for Tyler? Hey, do we want to do some Texas Tech trivia too? We let's do see, both. Let's do both. See how well Tyler knows his own team. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. We're gonna start. So we finish every episode with some duck trivia, Tyler. So the the duck trivia question of the day is Oregon's known for their running backs. Some may consider it running back university. Uh, Had a lot of great ones over the years, but which Oregon running back currently holds the PAC 12 record for rushing touchdowns in their career? Well, Michael James. No, that's a guess. Brad, go ahead. Nate, you finish it. 
Legarrette Blunt. Good guess. Go. Nate. Uh, it's I know I'm a nerd, but it's Royce Freeman. Correct. Oh, I should have known that. Broke, mean, it, yes. broke it in 2017. Yes. I knew my that. First year. Nate's uh, on a roll. Is that is that three in a row? Four yeah, row? we'll have we'll have our editor, which is just all all of us, just put up the standings here. All of us. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a social media guy. I'm not an editor. Um, <laughs> but we'll have our editors, uh, the guys yeah, at the bottom of your you. screen. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now, right. this, is, this is about the only thing I know about Texas Tech football. Mm-hmm. So, in, I think, 2008, there was a historic upset, Texas Tech over Texas. Yes. When Texas was the number one ranked team in the country. Uh-huh. What was the quarterback wide receiver connection on the game-winning touchdown pass? Oh. Was- so I know exactly who I she is. It's Michael Crabtree. Yeah. Who yeah. was the quarterback? Uh, yeah, the quarterback. There's so there's like it's weird though because there's so <laughs> many that it could be. No, there's so many great ones. Yes. I'm either thinking BJ Simmons or Graham Harrell. Um I'm gonna go Graham Harrell. All right, let's hear the rest of the answers. Um who was the guy? Brad, I uh, honestly don't know. Uh, this is a total guess. Um, just because he took Graham Harrell, I'll take BJ Simmons as uh, so right. Simmons Simmons to Crabtree for the win. Nate, uh, who's the backup on the Bills right now? Um, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, he, I don't even think he went to Texas Tech, but whoever, whatever his name is, Tyler was correct. It's Graham Harrell, the Crabtree. I knew the it. Win. Come on. I'm glad. I'm glad Tyler knew his own. His All right, own Tyler. Position. Follow up. Who's the greatest Texas Tech quarterback who currently starts for the Chiefs? This is a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> his name's Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> oh man, we got uh, we got some stories, bro. Yeah, we, we got time. I mean, I think I was we got time for any story. Like now we're just kind of riffing at this point. So yeah, tell us yeah. whatever you whatever. Yeah, you we'd love know. we'd love some funny stories from your time. I guess it's more of a video, but um obviously Pat came by for his hall his ring of honor um induction. I guess because it's, it's really early. I mean, but that's what happens when you are that good at quarterback. Um it, it, Jackson, his brother, was in the facility and it's I'll send you guys the video after, but one of my teammates just took a video of of him and he was doing a TikTok in the facility. Um and it was just one of the cringiest things ever. And it was just like it was just awesome in the moment to see it live. Um <laughs> it, it life was, changing it, experience. Yeah. But it's kind of cool is because my coach um coach Kitley is uh coach Tim. He was his quarterback coach and called <clears> that tech, so that connection was, was pretty cool comment. But I just forgot I just maybe think of have you guys been playing any sellers of Catan lately? No, dude. Dude, that game kind of died when you left. I'm not gonna lie. It did. Like, All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm kind of glad because it was at his. Pe- Ow, Murphy. No. <laughs> Crap. The shit out of me. Um. Yeah. What that was a it was a, it was a top tier game. We played like we played like every week at least once. Oh yeah. Ball yeah, we had out. a pretty good run. We had a pretty good run going. We listened to some some Drake and play Settlers of Catan. It was just it was. <laughs> dude, when the. Uh... What was that song? Laugh now, cry later, or whatever. And that song came out like you forced me to play it as soon as it dropped on Apple Music, and like within like ten seconds, it was like the classic Drake meme. Tyler's like, "Oh my god!" (laughs) (laughs) My dude, he hasn't said a word yet. No, dude. Oh my god, that's one of my favorite things. Every new Drake album that drops, I'm always like, I post something about it. I'm just like. I'm hyping it up as Go. as I should be because it's a fucking classic, and <laughs> and Ryan just sends me a certified dick writer <laughs> every time. He, he sent you his your certificate. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. dude, just, Ryan has no like. Who do you like, Ryan? Like, what is you? What is a hill that you? Will yeah, die? what was your what was your Spotify rap, bro? Garth Brooks, just. Uh... Uh... No, hang on. I'm gonna find it right now. Oh, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna find Forsyth too because you guys will. Forsyth was disgusting. I'm gonna uh, give would... I'm gonna give my prediction for Ryan's Spotify Wrapped right now, and my prediction is one Chris Stapleton. It's got to be on there. Wrong. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go ahead and say Luke Combs. Okay, so you ready for it? I got to pull it up now. Yeah. Luke okay, so number one, I have Blast. 
Uh, <laughs> it's you. It's you. Number two. Blast. That's number... A, that, that's a top tier one right there. I'll give you that. Oh yeah. Number two, Luke Combs. Number three, Kenny Chesney. Number four, Morgan Wallen. Might get canceled for that. Number five, Drake. <laughs> number six, Larry June. Le- never what I thought I would see a list with Blast and Larry June in the same as Kenny Chesney and Morgan Wallen. Just Brian's a big pirate flag guy. He's a big Kenny Chesney guy. <laughs> Uh, pirate flag. No, uh, Kenny Chesney in the summertime. It's undefeated. Yeah. Here, uh-huh. here, here's the go. Alex Forsyth replay. Sorry to dox him. Number one, Eminem. Number two, on. Led Zeppelin. Number three, Brantley Gilbert. Number Next four, one's five, five finger death punch. Is it? No, no. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna read seven here because it's gonna be insane. Number four, The Game. Number five. So- Travis Scott, number six, Luke Bryan, number seven, G Herbo. So now everybody call him A A A A Furbo because he is him. Well, I don't have a Spotify rap because I'm an Apple Music user. Um, which I might, be, might be a hot take, but I just think that, yeah, that's what that's what ours were too. Nate just kept calling it Spotify for some reason. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I have a do, you, wait, wait, right? hold on, hold on. You use Apple Music? Yeah. Yeah, we all I'm do. Huge what, guy. what, what, who are all you guys? What kind of broke trash is that? <laughs> Brad, no, like, stop. Brad, stop. You are not a Spotify guy. Everyone yeah, should be a Spotify is. guy. For, Dude, for sure Apple is. Music is, is literally sure. on your phone when you download it. What, it's do you, already better. Do you have an Android too? Like what's, dude, you're. No, do you have an Android? No, I have Spotify and an iPhone, like a normal person. That's not normal. That's NPC activities, dude. Let's see my top artists. Yeah, I'm Drake. ready. Shocker. With uh, outstanding 4,000 minutes. And then um, next is Morgan Wallen, Chris Stapleton, mm-hmm. Gunna, 21 Savage, Tyler Childers, and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, that's that. Okay, that's like more all over the map. Right? Yeah, that's a little Mine. all over the place, bro. I'm going to be honest. That's what that's just who I am, Nate. I, I, I try and mix it up. The Red Hot Chili Peppers out of left field. It's just next. <laughs> next is Brent Fias. Yeah. Okay. No, I will say Tyler did put me under Red Hot Chili Peppers. I didn't really know much Red Hot Chili Peppers until I lived with Tyler. We'd be jamming on the way to facilities to some Californication. So I can just maybe just some, some can't stop California. <laughs> Dan, Danny California. Nothing better than Danny California while you're just like floating the river on a on a boat and you're just just hanging out. That's vibes, peak vibes. Yeah. Well, boys, uh, I think uh, this was awesome, Tyler. No, oh, it was real. It was yeah, really bro. Best best of luck to you in the Texas Bowl, and you know, best of luck to you for your decision that's coming up. Tyler Shuck, big decision coming up. Tyler, January first on the pod. You have it. You have it. <laughs> that's. I'm gonna be no chance of doing anything. Chance. No chance. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no yeah we will definitely do this again we i mean brad nate you know whenever you guys are doing you guys have your own lives and jobs but we'll yes. love to have you guys out come to, to lubbock or texas and anytime soon we got a we got a guest room if you guys want to come turn up in in lubbock see what it's about fuck yeah you guys are definitely welcome Smart. well best of luck thanks again for coming on guns yes, up sir. baby appreciate good you time good seeing you guys see you tyler